I was waiting for the bells to come, but it feels like they're TM like, wait, bells are going to ring? And it's lovely to hear the chitter chatter of the church as it gathers together. You are so welcome here this morning, those that have gathered in the building and those who are joining us from the comfort of their homes. May each one know the Spirit's presence with us as we gather. There are some notices this morning. Um, as ever, we send out our links to the service, which has all the notices on them. And for those that are really observant and read all those notices, you will see a very exciting notice, which I didn't tell you last week, but I am thrilled to be announcing this morning. And that is that our halls are opening. Hooray! We are, I know, thank you. Am I the only one excited about that? We are absolutely thrilled. I'm sure many of you have met people in the community and they have said, when are your halls opening? We get that all the time. When are the halls opening? No, we're desperate, right? And I always say we're so desperate, but we're just hanging on till we know that everything's going to be done well and done safely. So you can imagine all the conversations all the forms that need filled out, all the risk assessments that need sent to various places. Um, but we are really delighted to say we will be opening the halls on Monday morning, 10 till 12, am I right, George? And um, we're going to be opening 10 till 12 each morning for teas and coffees. And then we're just going to take, we, through this home process, we've been really clear that we're just taking one step at a time. And as soon as we take that step and do it well, we'll take the next step. So um, this is the first step in opening our homes. All kinds of, George has had all kinds of um, conversations with various groups that are desperate to get back in and get active again. So these conversations continue. But for now, the church can celebrate that once more we will be able to use that brilliant resource that we have across the road. And I can't wait till after church on a Sunday we get to go back over the road for a cup of coffee together and spend time in one another's company. Um, there's another lovely announcement that I'd like to share. Um, this week, well last week, sorry, on Thursday, I was able to take my first baptism which was so exciting, having the privilege of doing so many funerals over this past year, to have my first baptism. I was like, oh, I have no idea what I'm doing. This is brilliant. I knew. And we had a lovely boy from J um, called Jamie from Bonnyrigg who lives in London, but who God had begun to stir in his heart that he wanted to be baptized. And he says, I want to come back to Bonnyrigg to do that with my family. So after our prayer time on Thursday, we had a lovely time with Jamie and with his grandparents where we were able to see him baptised. And we are just, for me, it was a real honour as always to be part of someone's story like that. But also recognising this boy in his 20s is unusual to be in the church. This is a gender and an age group which is not often visible in the church. And so we are taking that as these beginning seeds of revival, trusting on today's day of Pentecost that God is at work and God's spirit is moving. I'm also delighted to say that next week we've got another baptism. Yay! I know, it's so brilliant. This, what was that? I know, exactly. Well, that's the kind of bus I'm ready for, let me tell you. Um, so we've got a baby baptist, getting baptised next week. Lovely little Oscar um, is going to um, join us next week with his family as we see him baptised into the church. Me. This, um, this call to worship, I must say, is written by our new moderator. We have a, the General Assembly, you may have heard, kicked off yesterday. Ian and I have the pleasure of attending from our, um, from our homes in Bonnyrigg. Um, and the new moderator was inducted yesterday. And this is his call to worship for the church on this day of Pentecost. May the exuberant Spirit of God bursting with the brightness of flame into the coldness of our lives, warm us with a passion for justice and beauty. 
May the exuberant spirit of God, sweeping us out of the dusty corners of our apathy, breathe vitality into our struggles for change. May the exuberant spirit of God, speaking words that leap over barriers of mistrust, breathe by um, mistrust, convey messages of truth and new understanding. May the exuberant spirit of God, flame, wind, speech, burn, breathe, speak in us, filling our world with justice and joy. Let us listen to our first hymn together, that great Pentecost classic, O God of Burning Cleansing Fire. I spent some time thinking what our reading should be today and it seemed pretty obvious that it should be our reading from Acts and May is going to come and read for us the encounter from Pentecost and we've got a professional in this morning there's lots of big words in this so I was absolutely thrilled to not be doing it so thank you so much May. This is at, it's reading today's chapter 2 verse 1 to 21. 
The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this noise, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask each other, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they'd had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that reading. A joy to listen to. Thank you. Let's now listen once more to our next song together. Spirit of God, unseen as the wind.
Last week, you may remember, we spent time thinking about something that you all know now that I'm not a fan of, waiting. And this week, on Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate the arrival of the Holy Spirit. For the early church, whose stories we have been thinking about together, the waiting is over. Jesus told them many times, the Holy Spirit is coming. Although I'm going, something so much better is coming that's going to be a complete game changer. Heaven is sending the Holy Spirit. Get ready. Pentecost is described as the birthday of the church. It's viewed as a time to get out the party poppers and turn up the volume. But if I'm honest, as I prepared for today, I wasn't quite reaching for the streamers and for the party hats. This week, once again, for the second year in a row, I have been assigned as a commissioner at the General Assembly. I know full well the importance and the necessity for such an event. But it will not surprise you that I didn't get into ministry in anticipation of being part of the General Assembly. The call to ministry was not to get myself put on a committee or to put my tuppence worth in on deliverances. In fact, I'm far more interested in the deliverances we read about in the Bible, where Jesus healed and restored people. But the General Assembly is a vital and important part of our church. It's a time for us to reflect, to look at where the church is at, to consider where the church is going. As we do this, we may wonder, how did the church find itself here? When we read of that wild, spontaneous event that was read to us this morning, when we see what kicked off in Jerusalem, do we feel a little disappointed at how our church has expressed itself in the current day? I long for more supernatural displays of the Holy Spirit in our gatherings. But I confess, if flames started appearing in our service this morning, I think I'd be more than a little freaked out. Church for us in 2021 looks very different to that dramatic day which we read about. Church is not in easy times and the Church of Scotland is not alone in its struggle. Struggling with numbers, growth and influence Around the world, the global church is trying to find ways to combat the decline. We see the world becoming more and more secular and faith playing less of a role in family life. The church today may celebrate Pentecost with a sense of longing and maybe even a sense of regret. As I thought about it, though, I realized that Pentecost is not a template of how the church is meant to look, but it's a description of what happened when the Holy Spirit came just as Jesus said it would. Our children love hearing stories about how Richard and I first met. They love looking at photos from our wedding, where it all began but of course, I cannot recreate that day for them. There is no way I'm going to fit back into that dress that I wore in November 2008. And the restaurant where we had our meal has closed down now. We could never recreate that gathering that we had. Our wedding was a one-off event. We celebrate it each year in our house, but we can't replicate it. We're not meant to. It was a one-off. And from that beginning where Richard and I promised to face life together. The event that took place in Pentecost was the start of an amazing journey for the church. An exciting one. But not every day in church life is exciting. 
Yes, the church has much to celebrate. There are moments where it prophetically speaks up against injustice. Moments when it takes on the forces of the enemy in Jesus' name. Moments of healing and restoration. But it's also tough going. The church has a rich history of schisms and divides, forever disagreeing and locking theological horns. Like a marriage, not every day is a party, but rather a commitment to share the road together. As we celebrate the birth of the church, we celebrate the highs and the lows Regardless of what is going on in society, the church is as relevant now as it was when it all kicked off in Jerusalem. For some of us, you may be struggling as we've seen the church change beyond recognition. Times when we went to Sunday school, the pews were filled, children were silent, The church played an important role within the community. You don't need me to tell you that life has changed. And I sometimes wonder if the church has a bit of an identity crisis. We don't really know who we are anymore. We don't know how to keep up with a world that keeps changing. I remember at university, one of the modules that we covered looked at the Industrial Revolution Surprisingly, it felt so relevant to some of the conversations that I was having in my placement at the time. In the 18th century, ministers struggled to know how to adapt to the world that was changing so quickly with industrialization. No longer did the parish minister cycle around houses, baptizing babies and preaching to a packed church each Sunday. Now they were having to cope with everyone leaving the country, moving to the city, places of deprivation and depravity. The church, if it was honest, was frightened. It didn't like what it saw in the culture around. It didn't know what to do or how to say. The church had to adapt. It had to look at the communities that were forming. It had to feel the fear but roll up their sleeves and get involved. And this is what we are facing now as a church. As the General Assembly meets, never more have we needed to rethink how we reflect Jesus in society. The technological revolution is transforming the world at a pace faster than industrialization. And with the pandemic, you could be forgiven in wondering if life will ever be the same again. This is why celebrating Pentecost is such an important thing to do. We are marking the beginning of the church. The church which was born not out of strategy, not out of a business meeting creating a document full of buzzwords, but by an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Attending the General Assembly from my study in the manse is part of the role that I have as minister, but it's only a small part of that role. United, our role together is to be the church of Jesus, alive and active, following where the Spirit leads. Our previous moderator, Martin Fair gave a punch the air speech yesterday, rallying the church to action. He told us the Holy Spirit is still in the business of causing fires, and it's time for the church to start fanning those flames and putting away our fire extinguishers. We have a job to do, we have a gospel to proclaim. And heaven knows we need the Holy Spirit to help us. Let's pray. Father God, in this day of Pentecost, it is indeed a day of celebration. 
and we celebrate the gift of the church, the church which is proclaiming the good news of Jesus throughout the world. Help us to know what our role is in being part of this universal church. Holy Spirit, we pray for your presence, for your fire to burn in our hearts, that we might know what you are calling us to, that we might see Bonnie set a fire with your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us listen now to our next song together, which speaks of God building his kingdom and using us to do it. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray, unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. church we need your power in us we seek your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst we refuse to waste our lives for you are our joy and prize to see the captive hearts release the hurt the sick the poor
Whew, that's good, isn't it? Oh, let's pray. Father God, on this Pentecost Sunday, that is the cry of our hearts, that you would set your church alight, that we would indeed be hope shining in communities, leading people to the good news of Jesus. Father, we do pray for the General Assembly. Father, we do pray for all those representing all those parishes throughout Scotland and beyond. Holy Spirit, we know we completely need your guidance, your leading, as we seek the Father's ways. God, we pray that the right decisions would be made, that words would be spoken with love and compassion. And God, we thank you for the Church of Scotland, for all the amazing work that it does. For the families and the lives and the communities in which it reaches. Father, we thank you that each Sunday, your word is declared from parishes throughout this nation. Equip all those churches to make a difference. Father, in previous weeks, we have considered the persecuted church throughout the world, and we continue to stand with them and pray for them. For those who can't boldly stand in a church to declare, but rather in huddles in secret, declaring your word and your hope. Be with the leaders of those churches. Protect them, guide them. Holy Spirit, be close to them on this day of Pentecost. Father, for many of us gathered, there are many things that trouble us, many people who are on our hearts. In the silence, we name to you those that we are worried and concerned for, knowing that you hear. Father, thank you that you are a gracious, a good, and a loving Father. And we are your children, who you dearly love. We pray each of us would know you by our side in all that we do in the coming days. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen.